turn to Acts chapter 3. He was in Acts chapter 1 last week and heard some miraculous things and some more miraculous things happened in, uh, in chapter 3 here. Of course, if you look at chapter 2, there's a lot of miraculous things happened there. Yeah. We'll read about 10 verses here and then we'll see what we can get out of those. And if we've got time, we may go on some of the rest of them. <laughs> so now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. <clears throat> Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I get, have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had been happening unto him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house this morning. We thank God for all that you've done, how you've watched over and cared for us. We praise you for that. Pray, Lord, your blessings upon this service, upon this message, Lord, that you touch hearts here today. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your kindness and your love. In Jesus' glorious and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we're studying to bring some message in the beginning of the church here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've thought about this a lot. Uh, if, if you go to work somewhere, uh, a company has been established and uh, they don't operate after a while like they did when they started. Right. So the church had to have a starting had to have a time and had to have a, a lot of things happen uh, in the church to get it going. And things that don't really have to happen today, they can. God can still do the same thing He done back then if He wants to. Amen. We just got to trust in Him and what He does. <laughs> and I've really had to trust in Him uh, through this uh, time of trial that we're in right now with the church. But I thank God that uh, he's done what he's done. And and when I was asked, I said, well, the Lord will take care of it. You know, he always does and always will. And I praise him for that. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. We understand this to be about three o'clock in the evening. Uh, the time that they used back then, it started, uh, uh, and it would go every hour would be counted. And if you count this all the way from 6 a.m. up to 3 p.m., it's a ninth hour. And uh, that's the way they, the way they kept time back then. Uh, Peter had just come off of a tremendous high. I don't know how long 
past this it was but he got up on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit come down and preached and 3,000 or so got saved there yeah. that that was a miracle in its own oh. and they was promised the Holy Spirit would come upon them we found that out in uh, Acts chapter 1 the message there but it hadn't stopped with the day of Pentecost and it's continuing on the, the mighty miracles and things that that's happening uh, in the book of Acts here we know that Luke wrote the book of Acts we found that out last week mm -hmm. and uh, wrote it to a certain individual Theophilus if I got his name right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke being possibly the only Gentile writing it, writer in the New Testament and being a physician also would have been amazed when he wrote these words down. Yeah. Saying a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful and asked alms of them uh, that entered into the temple certain man if you go over in the next chapter and i think it's about the 28th verse you find out he was 40 year plus that's how old he was mm -hmm. so uh, this is a long time being laid daily mm -hmm. at the temple mm -hmm. and of course back then they didn't have the welfare system and the, and the ways of supporting people that that we have today so somebody had to get up daily and carry this man to the temple that he might just have something to eat and, and be able to sus sustain uh, his life and, and the ones around him maybe. I don't know where he had uh, others, where he had a family or what. We don't know a whole lot about this, this individual other than he'd been crippled all his life he had never walked he had never leaped he had never jumped he never done anything like that but today it's going to be different for him yes, it is. <laughs> couldn't find uh, very little just different opinions on this beautiful gate at the temple doesn't matter which gate it was didn't matter uh, it was a gate at the temple and Peter and John just coming out of the Old Testament way of doing things uh, still went to the temple to pray still went to the temple to preach mm -hmm. uh, didn't all happen in the upper room had to get out of the upper room and get out in society and that's what they were accustomed to to going up uh, sometimes I think four times a day but I guess they had four different times at that uh, third sixth and the ninth hour uh, that they would go up and and pray and and uh, so this this was a, a popular gate here this was a gate where most people entered in to the temple and uh, this day was no different and this man dies and then the ones that carried him there that, that they went up and carried him and laid him out this gate here uh, couldn't get up and run around like you and I and it's it's hard to, unless you're in those shoes you can't understand mm -hmm. what somebody's really going through and uh, said so who's seen Peter and John about to go into the temple ask for something that they would have and that's what Alms is talking about here is gifts um, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him and, with John and said look on us look at us we have something miraculous and I, I thought about the the faith of Peter and John here it, it was amazing of course they just like I say they just come through Pentecost so 
they're probably on cloud nine wondering what's the Lord going to do next. And, and you, we don't know what God's going to do next. We, we, uh, we think we might, but we can't predict what God's going to do. Uh, I don't think God's lost any of his power. No. He's still able to do things Amen. the same way. But Peter said to this crippled man, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Yeah, he, he expected to receive the same thing that, that he'd received in the past. Silver or gold. Something he could turn into uh, buying something to eat or whatever. You know, whatever he needed. Clothes or whatever he needed. And I don't know where he had to pay the the gentleman that brought him to the temple or not, but all those things, you know, we had need of. Uh, thank God maybe that, that he had volunteers and maybe some family that, that brought him there. And uh, his only way he had to support himself. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none. I don't have anything in silver and gold to give you. That's what he was expecting to receive because that's what had always happened for 40, 40 plus years. Uh, but such as I have, give I thee. He had something miraculous this day. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. I'm sure he knew what raising up meant. I'm sure he knew what walking meant, even though he'd never done it. He'd never experienced it. And I, I thought about this in this miracle too. He'd never experienced walking or leaping or anything like this. But that today was going to be different. Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. I'm sure he had to have a little bit of encouragement to get up. <laughs> His feet and ankle bones received strength. As Peter reached down with his right hand to get him and to raise him up, he received strength. Miraculous thing happening. He probably didn't understand it. Didn't know what was happening. Didn't know that it was going to happen. But listen to this. Verse 8 said, He leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. <laughs> what a miraculous thing to happen. <laughs> and, and these things happen for a reason, too. Oh, yeah. uh, God don't do anything by mistake. It don't just affect maybe one person. Uh, what he may do for you may not affect just you. It may affect a lot of other people around him. And it's no different in this situation. And verse 9 said, All the people saw him walking and praising God. <laughs> wow. What a different day this is. Yes. <laughs> And that would be amazed to see this happen. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. I would have been too. Yeah. If that would happen here this morning, I would really be amazed. <laughs> And we'll continue on here a little bit. And said, as the lame man which was healed helped Peter and John and all the people ran together and to them into the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondered. This caused a commotion at this time that was unbelievable. 
And uh, if you read on, and we'll not go through the whole thing, but if you read on, uh, about 5,000 men gathered together because of this miracle. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. <laughs> and it gave Peter an opportunity to do some preaching. And Peter didn't, uh, didn't hold back any words. <laughs> he preached to them, Jesus Christ. He is the one that's done that. He said, you look upon us and you think this miraculous thing happened because of us. He said, it wasn't us. He said, it's because of Jesus. Uh, the one that you crucified. He even went on to tell them that. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in verse 13, it said, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob uh, and the God of our fathers have glorified His Son, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied Him in the presence of Pilate when it was determined to let Him go. Pilate was determined to let Jesus go, or let, uh, yeah, let Jesus go. But, but the people had something different in mind. Uh, I think sometimes today about the cruelty of, of people today. Mm -hmm. think nothing about taking another one's life. Uh, the Lamish girl lost her life at the hands of somebody just a few days back. Uncalled for. Wasn't hurting nobody, wasn't doing nothing to them, uh, that I know of anyway. It just happened. People can be cruel, but God can be gracious, can He? Amen. And we praise His holy name. said, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired of murder to be granted unto you. Traded Christ for a murder. What is people trading for today? Very little, isn't it? Yeah. I'd rather have Jesus and I don't know how everything's going to turn out. I don't have no idea. I don't know how this nation's going to continue on like it's going right now. And I know God's able to sustain us. Amen. God's able to take care of us. And uh, if He can do things like this, it's amazing what He can do. If He can create a world like we live in just by speaking the Word, yeah. that's miraculous, isn't it? Yes, it is. I've, I've thought many times there's no greater power than God's power to be able to just speak and things happen. Yeah. And... Uh, this is miraculous what's happened here. And my angel's not out here with us, so. Well, I can go get her. Huh? I'll go get her. Okay. <laughs> Do we need miracles today to believe? No, not really. We're told to believe in that Jesus died, He was buried, rose again the third day. It took miracles back then to get attention. Uh, I'm not saying that miracles don't happen today. They can. They can happen today just as good as they did back then. But that's in God's control, not in ours. We can't make them happen. We can't, we can't uh, perform miracles. Uh, if anything would happen in today's society like this, it'd have to be God. If anything happened back in that society in about that time, it had to be God. And uh, people have to have faith in God and what He can do. There's many, many situations, many miracles in the Word of God that we have uh, if we never see one. But we do still see miracles today. Maybe not exactly like this, but we see miracles. We see God sustaining people and taking care of people and, and helping them through uh, day by day. Uh, it's still happening. Maybe not exactly like this one, but it's still happening. But this is what it took for the Jews. Christ come to His own. He come to 
he, Christ was a, was a Jew, so he come to his own people to try to get them to come to God and, and be aligned up with God and try to get them to, to believe in him. A uh, few of them did. Thank God for that. That's how we have the gospel. It's how we have the Bible today because a few of them did. If you'll notice when God does something, in, in most cases, he only uses a few. And it only takes a few. He don't really have to have us to do anything because he can do it on his own. But God likes to use people and he likes to use us in the process. And we thank God for that. Uh, don't know how much he's ever used me, but he's, he's able to do that. He's able to do things that that we don't ever see or don't ever imagine happening, but God is still able to do those things. And we praise Him for that. What did it take to make you believe? It took God, didn't it? God had to come in your presence and, and touch you and, and cause you to believe. Thank God for the, the times that he's caused me to believe. I wouldn't be standing here today if he hadn't. It's a miraculous thing. We thank him for his presence. Thank him, thank him for his mercy and thank him for his kindness that he's given towards us. And we praise him for all that he's done.